It's a return visit to a route that's familiar yet full of surprises. It is very rural. Once you get off Route 4 and Route 43, it's just little roads out into the woods. But at one end, it's a road into the city, where we wind our way on a trail of fascinating and little-known history. She would rather have lived the way she lived than stayed enslaved to the Washingtons. Speaking of history, can you spot the landmark diner shoehorned next to a parking garage? Sure glad we did. In fact, it's a route famous for finds of all kinds, and we found our share even when we weren't quite sure what it is or what we'd do with it. But it's also an area of southern New Hampshire that can seem a state away from crowds and traffic. I grew up 20 minutes south of here, and I didn't even know that Great Bay existed until I was an adult. All of which has attracted artists and brewers, and for yet another visit, this reporter. It's a return to Route 4, next on Chronicle. This is Chronicle on WCBB Channel 5. There are artists, carpenters, just a real great mix of people. Epsom in this part of Route 4 is relatively undiscovered. It's far enough from here, far enough from there that it really hasn't gotten a lot of pressure. The whole town of Northwood kind of exists off of Route 4, so it's still, you're driving down our main highway. It's not New Hampshire's oldest or longest highway, but it is one of its most storied ones, winding between three of the state's largest cities and some of its most intriguing small towns, too. On a map, you'll find it as both U.S. Route 4 and First New Hampshire Turnpike, but it's long been better known by its nickname, Antique Alley. Running east from Portsmouth, Route 4 itself runs just over 45 miles west to Concord. Part of that, mostly through the town of Northwood, is considered Antique Alley, where I'd last visited in 2010. It's an antiquing destination for people from around the country. Internationally, people come antiquing here. I think we were, at some period of time, the oldest antiquing trail in the country. Colleen Pingree and her husband Don still have little trouble making their own antique store stand out from others along Route 4. But R.S. Butler's purple paint job is only one of the many ways that the couple made the store their own after taking over from Colleen's parents a decade ago. We just were like, let's go with what we love. So we've evolved into a little record store within an antique shop, but it's eclectic. That's for sure. And so are the customers, from serious collectors to fall tourists to locals. We have a lot of kids who shop here because we sell record albums and vintage clothing. There's a lot of really unique things here that you cannot find in other places. And I just got these cowgirl boots that I've been searching for. Everyone's really friendly, and there's a dog to welcome you. Further east, just off Route 4 in Durham, no vinyl or vintage clothing, but if you're into vintage lighting, you're in luck. This is a original 1870s? 1870s. So this is the kind of lamp that might have been originally in a country store. Right, and it would have had oil. Since 1975, Joan Carter, along with her late husband Frank, has anchored the eastern end of Antique Alley. Wiswall House itself, a 200-year-old antique, is filled to the rafters, as Carter likes to say, though COVID and more people working from home did create an unexpected demand. A lot of desks and a lot of bookcases it keeps me on my toes trying to get the right inventory. Lots of antique home furnishings, but up in the attic, lots of intriguing odds and ends, too. You have been in this business in this area for 50 plus years. Yeah, 1975. So you've, you've seen the antiques business change here and along Route 4, right? Yes, very definitely. And I think Route 4 is one of the examples where they, at one time they had 38 mm. antique shops between here and Concord. It's not as big as it was. We're half of what we were in the heyday in terms of numbers of shops, definitely fewer. But for the surviving shops like R.S. Butler's, the underlying demand and passion for antiques remains strong. I think it's a hunt, you know? It's people who like appreciate seeing something they've never seen before, or looking for something that is hard to find. We're open seven days a week, but Don and I have two friends who work two days for us. And what do we do on those two days? We are out looking for stuff. So it's a way of life. And like life, it evolves. This was not here, my last visit. This right? is not here. Basically, 
You have too much stuff. But really, who's to say? After all, the lure of antiquing is that one person's too much stuff is another's newfound treasure. Uh, think that'll sell? <laughs> we have had people ask. The right, the right seafood <laughs> that's, restaurant. That's right. It's gone. The gigantic megaphone? <laughs> Tough to say. Quiet on the set. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> that is good. And like all stores and all businesses, the yeah. stores along uh, New Hampshire's Antique Alley have had to adapt and, and change to the constraints of COVID. Yeah, at RS Butler, actually, they would, customers could call in and request to see certain items, and then staff members would meet them out in the parking lot with those items. Needless to say, the people at RS Butler's are happy that shoppers can now come back yeah. into the store. A lot easier for everybody. Yes. Up next, grilling up lunch at Gillies.